The, the lab that I worked with was, was the best. They took my idea and really brought it into fruition. Jamie, a warm welcome to the Face Yoga Expert podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me join you today. I'm excited to um, have a nice chat with you. Absolutely. I'm really excited too. And there's so much I want to delve into when it comes to skin and your beautiful products. But I really love just hearing a little bit about the origin story at the beginning of my episodes, because I think it sets the tone so beautifully for the rest to the podcast. So I'd love to know where your journey with skin and beauty really started. Sure thing. Well, I do come from a line, a family history. My mother is a hairdresser and owns a hair salon still to this day and works at the age of 70. So God bless her. I know. Uh, I never wanted to go into the beauty industry. She always said, Jamie, just go, go to school to be a cosmetologist and I'll give you my salon. And I, I just thought, oh, hair sounds awful. And it's actually a very funny story how I got into doing skin. I actually worked on a television show and we went on our third season and that season ended up, we wrapped and went on hiatus. And I thought, I think I'm going to go to school to be an esthetician because I didn't know what I wanted to do. One year I had gone and worked at a restaurant and another year I'd worked at a gym, but I just thought if I went to school to be an esthetician, I was learning something. I loved skin. I loved what it was about. And so I went to esthetician school that third year that we were on hiatus. Never thought I was going to stay in skin. Thought I was going to go back to that television show and work on the show. Um, The show called me and said, this is our start date. I actually said, can I please have two weeks off and you just find somebody to fill in for me? And they're like, no problem. And had a new start date. They called me the night before I was supposed to go back to the television show and said, we're going to keep the girl that's been here for you. And my my heart sunk. I thought, what am I going to do? And I said, Jamie, you have two weeks left of esthetician school. Call your mother. Go see if you can work at her salon. And the rest is history. (laughs) Mum knows best. (laughs) She knew. Amazing. And then you've been many decades now then in the beauty industry. I cannot believe it. I went to school in 2001 and here we are in 2024. 23 years as a licensed esthetician and I still love it every day. Great. Oh, that's so lovely to hear. And I know actually that your journey with skin took a very different turn, maybe one you weren't quite expecting when you had your son and your son started suffering from eczema. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So of course, as a skincare professional, I thought I I know how to treat this. Like we're going to look at diet and going to take away environmental factors. But then when it came to sunscreen, I couldn't find a sunscreen that was a mineral-based sunscreen that didn't turn the skin white, pasty, or didn't take uh, eight hours to rub in this super big goop or leave the kid white as a ghost. (laughs) And maybe it's just a little personal preference being in the skincare industry. I thought, ooh, I don't want my son to look white. (laughs) (laughs) So that's kind of how it all unfolded was because he had the eczema and I couldn't find a sunscreen that I personally felt comfortable putting on his skin. And that's that's where it started. That's where your journey into your new beautiful product, SPF, started. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so it's a, actually it's a mineral-based sunscreen and I really wanted something mom-friendly. Um, I, as a mom with a little one at the time, I just could not put a sunscreen on a wiggling toddler. He was running everywhere. And I thought, okay, we've got to be able to find something that goes on quick and easy and that kids actually enjoy putting on. Mm -hmm. So that led me to create a spray on sunscreen, not any sunscreen spray. Yes. A trigger spray. So there's no aerosol. So then you won't um, actually, breathe any of the bad inhalants, and it is mineral-based. It's zinc oxide 
and titanium dioxide. It's just beautiful. It's one of my favorite products created. Yeah, it's amazing. And I don't know how you've done it without the skin turning white because I've tried a little bit of this. It's not been sunny enough to use it since I've got it yet, but I've used it on my hands because I always wear on my hands and my face every day anyway. But here in the UK, the rest of me is covered up because it's absolutely freezing and there leaves no white residue. Now I've used lots of zinc based sun creams in the past. And like you say, they make the skin look ghost white. I used to use them on both of my daughters when they were babies you know when they're tiny babies you don't want to use anything but like the most natural and exactly that they would go around with these ghost white faces I used to put a massive hat on them so no one even noticed that it was this thick cream on them so how have you managed to make this so it hasn't got that thick residue and it smells like holidays which I love <laughs> <laughs> yes well you know I can't take credit for everything I have a cosmetic formulator and chemist that really helped me work on the product. And it, that is not, um, I should say, this is the final product, but it took many, many formulations to get there. We had to pass FDA approval. The, the lab that I worked with was, was the best. They took my idea and really brought it into fruition. I gave them a list of ingredients that were acceptable and a list of ingredients that were unacceptable. And then I also um, had a way that I wanted it to look and to feel and the way that I wanted it to go on the skin. So we really worked together and they are the brains behind it. I'm just the creator and the one that had the crazy idea for it. So, um, but thankfully that they are an amazing team to work with and that they really, really took my idea and worked with me to help me create it. I love that. And the ones that you do actually for, I presume, much more for adults um, are have a little tint to them. So it's almost like you're wearing makeup when you put them on, which is wonderful. Yes, that is my uh, protect color in one quick step. So we moisturize, protect and color in one quick step. And those are the tinted sunscreens. They're, they smell beautiful. They go on the skin beautifully. And a lot of people actually no longer wear a foundation. They go straight just to our tinted sunscreens. It's brilliant. I've been using the, actually the medium shade. So you sent me very kindly the light and the medium. And I tried both and I found the light actually a little bit too light for my skin tone. And for some people it would be perfect, but the medium's great. And exactly, it was almost as though I was just wearing a very light foundation, almost like a tinted moisturizer, which is great and very easy to apply just with fingertips. Just with fingertips and then just Tap it right into the skin and you are good to go. And it actually, you can always reapply the tints. There's really nice. I just put a little dab on and it is like the nose area that sometimes you feel like it, that gets rubbed off a little easier on the nose, but they're great to keep in your purse to use throughout the day. Uh, we also have, I didn't send one to you. I don't think I did, but a little sunscreen brush. Like These it. work beautifully with the tints mm -hmm. to, to just put it right in. and the spray. Kids love to spray this on and then rub the spray in with the brush. It's like painting. It is. And I can get my kid to put it on himself every day. I no longer have to help them. So it really is just user friendly. And that's what I wanted when I created it. Amazing. And how is your son's eczema now? Um, it's very manageable. We, um, learned that he's allergic to feathers. So of course he was sleeping on a down pillow, a down comforter, <laughs> mm. all the things we removed that. And then of course, all the dyes that are in foods here in America, know that the UK is a little bit tighter and you don't have as many chemicals in your foods. And, but I think one day we'll get there in the U S yeah. <laughs> so we yeah. don't try to, to limit anything that has a, a dye or food coloring in it. And then he's allergic to some grasses and molds. But environmentally, we just try to limit those things. Or if he's out playing soccer or, as you say, in the UK football, yes. <laughs> he's, he's wearing higher socks and longer sleeves. And so we really do try to control it as much as we can. And if he has a flare up, we do have a cream, but he's re really been quite well. So thankfully... 
That's great. That's really lovely to hear. And I'd love to hear, in your opinion, the importance of wearing an SPF for our skin, because I know there's almost like two camps of people when it comes to it from an aesthetic point of view and from a beauty point of view. There's definitely the people that are saying you need to be wearing this every day. It's the number one way to reduce aging. But then also, particularly you see this in the natural holistic community that actually say that because of chemicals in many sunscreens, which I know you found a solution to that problem, but also because then the lack of vitamin D that we can get um, if we are covering up all of our skin. So there's definitely two camps. And I must admit, for me personally, I sit more in the camp of wearing the SPF. When we do have some sunshine here in the UK, I do expose a little bit of my body for a short amount of time to get some vitamin D. I take a vitamin D supplement. I try to use non-toxic sunscreens. So that's what I choose to do. But I know that there is a whole spectrum of opinions, but like I say, particularly two camps. Yeah. So I fall on this, the side of wearing it every day, mm -hmm. at least on your face. The sun is responsible for 90% of the visible signs of aging. So let's at least just have that on our face and our hands. If we, we want to keep that, um, I do believe in getting some sun as well. Some sun exposure is good for you. I'm not telling you to go lay out from the hours of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. when the sun is at its peak, but a little bit of vitamin D and sun exposure is good. You just want to make sure that you're not burning the skin. So go ahead, go out, reapply your sunscreen every two hours, which is very important because a lot of people, if they are exposed to the sun, they forget to reapply. So always make sure to reapply and it's best to actually reapply on clean skin. So if you are going to be out in the sun all day at the beach or at the pool, I always bring a, a baby wipe, wipe off the skin and then reapply. And that's just because you want to get the full, um, some protection factor in there. If you're reapplying sunscreen over sunscreen, it's not going to block out as well. So always want to just reapply on clean skin. Make sure that you do reapply every two hours. Wear your hat, wear your sunglasses. And if you can, try to sit under a little shade because that those sun's rays are still going to bounce up and reflect from the water or from the ground. So always want to make sure that you're still being as protected as possible. Absolutely. And I completely agree with all of what you say. And that's exactly what I do as well. So one thing I don't actually do, which is a really, really interesting point, is about taking off the sunscreen and then reapplying it. But that makes complete sense. I, I love that tip. And I'm going to add that into my routine for sure. But I always say to people, you know, even if it is a cloudy day, even if you are in the UK, even if you're sat at a desk, by a window, remembering that those UVA rays can penetrate the clouds, they can penetrate the glass. So needing to wear that SPF each day to prevent those aging rays is so, so important. Um, and like you say, it's 90% of the aging that happens to our skin is from sun damage, which is huge. Absolutely. We always want to make sure that we have our sunscreen on when we're driving as well, because like you said, those rays can penetrate through windows, through your car windows. Um, I remember there was a picture that was floating around the internet of a truck driver yeah. that didn't wear that. sunscreen. I know everybody in the skincare world and even non-skincare world have probably seen that picture at one time. You saw the, the picture of the side where the sun came in the window, how wrinkly it was and the sun, side that did not have the sun coming in. It was pretty, um, it was age, but it was night and day. Yeah. So that just goes to show you that the sun can get through those windows. Absolutely. And I think that was one of the best examples I've seen, actually, because <clears throat> rarely do you find an example where two sides of the face are so wildly different. But of course, he was spending all day, every day for decades and decades and decades in the truck with one side right by a very exposed window. So yeah, a, a great example. And I'd love you to tell us a little bit more about your personal beauty or skincare routine. Is there any products you love or any treatments that you love having? Are there any tips you'd like to share with us? What did we say? 23 years as esthetician. Yes. <laughs> There's yes, lots. Um, but it's wild to think when I first started as an esthetician that the biggest thing was glycolic peels, glycolic peels, microdermabrasion, microdermabrasion. And 
Now, my point of view is let's take a more holistic approach. Let's not do deep, harsh chemical peels. Let's do a little bit more uh, holistic approach. Let's build up the skin. So for me, I love a product that my friend Gata created from my skin buddy, but it's a Bee Bright serum and it has B deficit in it and growth factors. And she's created a daytime serum and a nighttime serum. And the nighttime serum is a retinol base that you don't have to cycle in. It's a very gentle retin-A based. So there is a retinol based, but it just leaves your skin beautiful. So those are two new products that are hot on the market that I personally love. For me, I keep it simple. For my own personal routine, I do a little uh, gua sha in the morning uh, using uh, Jane Mann's tool called the Anma. So I use that and I just do the face and do a lot of lymphatic drainage and just really keep it simple. Yeah, that's great. Amazing. And are there any sort of facials you love going for? Any treatments? Anything that you feel that gives your skin that that added boost? Well, I do love lymphatic drainage facials and I still love the hydrofacial. Mm -hmm. Those are two of my my favorite treatments to give and to get. Yeah, I've never had a hydrofacial and so many people I know absolutely love it. So it's definitely on my list to get because everyone says it really feels like your skin has had the biggest moisture boost ever. It does. And it's great because you can really customize it. They do have a lymphatic drainage tool that you can start with. So it has almost like a cupping tool where it has a little suction and you can customize all the serums and a light treatment. The LEDs are great. So it really is an all encompassing treatment that you get everything into one. So you will definitely have to try it. Absolutely. I mean, I'm very lucky that I get sent a lot of amazing skincare tools and, you know, high tech facial tools that I'm able to use at home. So I have a lot less facials nowadays than I used to because I'm able to try all of these beautiful products. So I have, you know, all the LED masks and the at home lasers and even microdermabrasion tools. I mean, so many different things. So I am lucky that I can do these little treatments myself, but there's nothing like going into a salon and having a salon grade equipment and having somebody else do it for you. That's what it is. It's somebody else doing it for you. You cannot replace human touch. I do a lot of things on myself at home as well, like bring my little tools home or, you know, do my own manipulations with um, gua sha tools and facial massage. But there's something so extraordinary laying on a treatment bed and feeling the power of human touch, where they touch your neck and your shoulders and your face, and you just melt into that facial bed. Absolutely, completely agree. And are there any sort of wellness routines that you enjoy doing? Do you have a morning routine or an evening routine? I do. Uh, my morning routine in my shower is using the Anma in the shower. I do it every morning. And that's probably my, my biggest thing that I make sure that I like to do because I really like to get the face um the lymph, the, any stagnant lymph out of the face and just kind of drain that. And it really helps me get on with my day. I love drinking a green drink in the morning and I love having hot tea at night. Those are maybe a little extra things. And uh, just really in the morning, taking time, some quiet time to reflect and put a positive spin on my day. It's definitely a lot less energy to be mad or angry or negative than it is to be positive. So I really like to have a positive start to my day and it just sets the tone and sets the mood for the day. Absolutely. And if you could share with my listeners and my viewers, for those people that are going to be watching it on YouTube, one top tip for inner peace, what would that be? You know, just always look at the glass half full. Honestly, you just... There's so much negativity in the world. Let's just bring the positive, be the light, and look at the glass half full. And that's just how I've always lived my life. And I just, I really think that that's one thing that has kept me going. Amazing. That's such a great tip. And Jamie, would you be able to share with everyone where people can find out about your beautiful sunscreens, your beautiful products? And I know that you're US based. Um, Would you let us know where you do ship to as well? 
Yes, currently we're shipping in the United States only. We're working on international, but for the time being, we are definitely all over the United States. And you can find us at spiev.com, which is E S P I E V E. Dot com and you can find us on socials at on Instagram and Facebook um, SPF uh, I think Instagram is actually SPF underscore SPF right and we'll link to all that in the show notes so people can just click straight through and find you there Jamie thank you so much for joining me today on the face yoga expert podcast oh it's been my pleasure thank you so much again for having me thank you